Yeah, and I think it's really important to talk about when it comes to delayed gratification, how instant the life that we live in is now. When we think about it, we can get food delivered. We can find anything on the internet. Social media keeps us connected to absolutely everything. And so we are so used to that instant gratification, Um, whether it's posting a picture and getting likes, that's instant. Um, Being able to search something on the internet, that's instant. And it's also the factor of When we're looking at food, of you can go and get fast food, you can get that food delivered, like I mentioned, um, and you can also be in this place of when we talk about gratification in general, we need to talk about the concept of impulse control because it's not always the lack of impulse or the lack of impulse control that makes people have a hard time delaying gratification. Some of it comes from a realistic mindset of being in a spot of thinking, well, if this is here in front of me now, I might as well take it because it might not be there in the future. And that's something that when we look at any kind of study that's been done on delayed gratification, or if you've looked into it a little bit more, people often talk about your ability to have that impulse control. But it's also when you look at life, life doesn't always have the guarantee of that better reward. And so it is something that you could not eat that food at that party and still not lose weight. Or you could be in a space where you study for the exam and you still don't pass the exam. And so I think it is important to bring up that it's not just your lack of impulse control, although that does play into it, but it also can be the fact of it's not guaranteed that something's going to come after, or it's not a perfect scenario of, oh, if I don't eat this brownie 100%, I'm going to lose weight. And so it's also something that you don't have to completely deprive yourself of things to be able to to figure out what life is about or to, um, I mean, even with an enjoying life, you don't want to feel like, oh, I always have to deprive myself. I always have to delay that gratification. But it's really being able to look at there's a balance that you want to be able to find between being able to have restraint and being able to have mindfulness within what you're working towards as well as having that deep work and that hard work in place. Yeah, and I think that uh, many individuals, when we're thinking on delayed gratification is that you may feel alone in the scenario of how fleeting your mind is, where I would tell you that 90% of people are in the same boat as you. They're they're battling through the same thought process of like, I'm on my computer and I could answer these very important emails, or I could take the super simple route, sit back, turn on YouTube and watch some really funny clips. I go through that every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and especially within our work in general, where we're taking notes within a client's check-in and then we're providing feedback, whether that be through a Loom video or that be through a voice memo, it can be challenging to go back and forth between those two things of taking the notes, recording, taking the notes and recording. And so one thing that I have found for myself and, and for the coaches that are listening that you may follow the same way that you engage with your clients is that I take a certain block of time that is going to allow for me to to take notes on the check-ins themselves. So however many I can get done within maybe an hour's time frame of taking notes, that next hour I'm going to thereafter record that those, those check-ins specifically. It may not take me the full hour but I like to block them or put them together because I found myself in a scenario where maybe I would have a check-in that was pretty um, relaxed and there wasn't a whole lot of of things to touch on. It was more so just touching base, making sure everything was good. And then maybe I'd have a check-in that was next after that that was like, Um, some exercise execution videos, some blood panels to look over. And that one was taking me a massive amount of time. And so what I would find is that after that one, I was like, I need a break. (laughs) I need to go and watch YouTube videos. And it was a very uh, challenging circumstance because I found myself in this scenario where I would just kind of give up or lose focus or fall out of that deep state of focus that we were just, that Austin was just speaking to. So that's one of those things where I have to delay the gratification of getting to enjoy the YouTube videos. I know it's kind of a a silly analogy, but it is a a simple one that on a day-to-day aspect that many people are running into, especially with the aspect of being at work where it's like, ah, I'm not that busy. I could get on my phone and then all of a sudden you're on your phone for 30 minutes and uh, getting on TikTok and you're scrolling and it's a very draining process. And I feel as though for myself, at least when I'm looking at uh, TikTok or I'm looking at Instagram, just mindlessly, my creativity is just kind 
kind of like a very quickly drained battery. If you look at like a diesel truck where you push the gas pedal on that and all of a sudden you're already seeing the gas <laughs> going down. That's how I feel about my creativity when I'm looking at TikTok or Instagram aimlessly. I'm just like very quickly seeing that charge go down. Uh, whereas when I, when I stay off of it, I, that charge stays pretty high and I can be creative, I can be energetic um, more so throughout the day uh, for myself, I see.